G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel, I'm Josh. In this video, we're going to have a look at how to solve quadratic equations through using the method of completing the square. In particular, where we have an x squared coefficient that is not equal to one. So I'll give you an example of what I mean here. Say we were trying to solve the following question. We have three x squared minus eight x plus three is equal to zero. Well, what we're trying to do is we're trying to work out what the value of x is. So, as you're going to see straight away, for the x squared, we have a coefficient that is not equal to 1. So when this occurs, the very first thing we have to do is we have to adjust the equation so we have a coefficient that is equal to 1. The easiest way is to divide by the coefficient. So here, we have a coefficient of 3. We're going to divide this entire equation by 3. So let's do that. So 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. So we end up with x squared. Subtract. We have 8 divided by 3. That's over x plus 3 divided by 3, which is equal to 1. And this is all equal to 0 divided by 3, which is equal to 0. So we've just gone through and rewritten that out. So the next step, what we're going to do is we are going to rewrite this equation out where we're going to keep all the x terms on the left here. And we're going to move the constant over to the right hand side by taking it away. So let's do that. So we have the x terms, which is uh, x squared minus 8 over 3x, and this is all equal to, we are going to leave a bit of a space here, we're going to use this in a little bit. Uh, now we're going to subtract 1 from both sides, so subtracting 1 cancels this out here. Subtracting 1 means we end up with negative 1 on this side here. Okay, so now we're going to work out what we put into this space here. And that is where we go through this little funny process to work out what we need to complete the square here. Now the way we do this is as follows. There's two little steps to this process. The first thing we do is we look at the x value here, the coefficient in front of that, which is negative eight over three, okay? The first thing we do is we're gonna multiply that by half. We're gonna work out what one half of that is. So when we do this, we have negative eight times one, which is equal to eight. This is all going over three times two, which is equal to six. Now just check at this stage whether you can simplify this any further. If you can, do so. So this is going to be equal to, two goes into both of these, negative uh, four over three. Okay, so that's the first step we do to that value there. Now at this stage, it's worth just jotting this value down for later use. So I'm just gonna jot it down right there and put it just there. The next thing we do to this value is we go through and we square it. So when we do this, a negative times a negative, well, that's a positive. So that cancels that out. We end up with four times four, which is equal to 16, and three times three, which is equal to nine. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add these results to both sides, okay? So we end up with plus 16 over nine, and to this side, we also end up with 16 over nine, just to keep everything nice and balanced. Now we don't need this part here anymore, so I'm just gonna erase it so we don't have to look at it anymore, and we're gonna work out the next part of our equation. Now we have this here, which looks a little bit messy, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tidy that up. Now the first thing is, this here is a perfect square, so we're gonna write this as a simplified version of this. This is equal to uh, x minus four over three squared. All right, you could expand this out, x minus four over three, multiply by x minus four over three, and you would get this whole value here. But you want a bit of a shortcut how I know this? Well, you're gonna notice over here, this is minus four over three. That's that same value that goes in just there. I told you it would come in handy, right? And this is all equal to, well, on this side, we're going to combine these terms. So we have a number over nine here. This is negative one. So let's make this a number which is over nine. Negative one is equal to, negative nine over nine. Okay, so now we have negative nine over nine plus 16 over nine. This is equal to seven over nine. Cool. Now we're almost done. The next thing we do is we're going to take the square root of both sides. So we're gonna square root both of these values here. So what do we get when we do this? Now, if we get x minus four over three squared and we square root the whole lot of that, this squared here is going to get cancelled out. So we're gonna end up with x minus four over three. And this is going to be equal to, now one of these has to get the plus and the minus, and this side's gonna get it, plus or minus the square root of seven over nine. Now we can simplify this a little bit further through some of the rules of our radicals that we can do here. 
If we want to simplify the square root of a fraction, we can simplify it to the square root of the top of the fraction over the square root of the bottom of the fraction. So this is actually equal to plus or minus the square root of 7 over the square root of 9. Now the square root of 9, 3 times 3 is equal to 9. This is equal to 3. So just to tidy things up, I'm going to move this across. So there we go. Now what we're going to do is we are going to isolate x by itself here on the left hand side to get our solution. So when we do that, we get the following. We could either get a first solution where we have x, which is equal to, now this is subtracting at the moment, so we can add this to both sides. We can end up with 4 over 3, and we're going to be adding the square root of 7 over 3, and that's one possible solution, or x is going to be equal to 4 over 3, where we're going to be subtracting the square root of 7 over 3. And there are our two possible solutions. There you go. A bit nasty looking. You can go through and work out what these are, and they're going to be very uh, decimally sort of answers. I think one's about 2.215, and the other one is about 0 0.45. But that's going to be the answers for our particular question there. And that's how you go through and you solve quadratic equations through using the completing the square method. Anyway, tell us what you think. If this video helped you out, let me know in the comments and give me a big thumbs up, a big like. That's really, really appreciated. Also, if you like this video, maybe you want to subscribe or possibly become a patron and support the Tech Math channel. There is a link in the description if you wish to become a patron. Uh, big shout out to my patrons. Your support is always well appreciated. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope this video helped you. We'll see you next time.